It's the first day of fall, and that means that my favorite time to get out and make street photography here in New York City is upon us. From late September to early mid-November, when the sun comes up in the morning, it pretty much lines up with the street grid here. So 42nd Street, 34th Street, any of the major streets that go cross town from east to west, the sun really nicely lines up with the grid. And that means amazing, amazing light on clear days where you get really beautiful, dramatic, long shadows. And it's one of my favorite times to get out and photograph really in, in the whole year. And what's nice about it is it's also not super cold because the sun also lines up in like February, but it's pretty cold at, you know, 7 a.m. on a February morning. And in the past couple of years, some of my absolute favorite street photos that I've made of the entire year were made really during this t period of time. And they are usually super high contrast. There's something about them that I really like. And I tend to gravitate towards making images and viewing images that have that high sense of contrast that Chiaroscuro built into them. But what's different this year is that this is my first full year not working with zoom lenses or you know DSLR or traditional mirrorless cameras. You know, I have been working entirely on the Leica M system. So this is my Leica M10R. I work with my Leica M6 as well. But I've really spent most of this year working at 28 millimeters. And making images with a uh, prime lens is, is very different than making images with a zoom lens, especially when it comes to street photography. And you know, if you've if you've done both, you understand you know, what the difference is. There's a there's a different sense of creativity that we have to employ when we are out making street photography with a prime lens. You have to move your body, you have to really think about what's in the frame. You don't have the ability to sort of cheat distance with those zoom lenses. And so my process is totally different this year than it was, you know, last year or two years ago. And moving on to the Leica cameras also has changed the way that images are made because these bad boys are pretty much entirely manual. I mean, the, the M10R does have essentially an aperture priority mode if I wanted to use it, but I put this thing in manual and I go, and it's the same with the Leica M6. That's really different than when I used to be out making images with my Canon system. So the Canon 6D Mark II, or then I graduated myself up to the Canon 5D Mark IV, and now I have a Canon R5 that I still use for my commercial photography, but I was also using it for street photography, and it's a, it's a totally different process. So I thought it would be good to give myself a bit of an experiment or a bit of a test to go back to um, something that I used to use a lot, which is a 50 mil lens. Now, a lot of you probably have a 50 mil or started on a 50 mil, the, the nifty 50 or some other you know version of a 50 mil lens. And what's really amazing about 50s is that they tend to be super fast. So they have a really nice wide open aperture if you want it, and that they're often relatively inexpensive. So a lot of us get them when we're starting out. And I found that when I first started out, making street photography or, or traveling with a 50 mil lens that I made some of my favorite images when I was really just starting to learn my way around the camera. So I thought, look, it's a, it's a new year. I've, I've spent over a year now finally on a new camera system. I'm much more comfortable shooting entirely in manual and doing all of the things that kind of come with that with my Leicas. So let's get back out and try and make some early morning images using this time of year that's my favorite. So I thought in this week's video, I would just walk you through some of the images that I made this week on the 50 because they look and feel really different than the images that I, I have been making on the 28. And I'm actually really happy with a couple of them, but there's also a lot of stinkers. So I thought I'd kind of walk you, walk you through the past couple of mornings and talk about a couple of the locations that I shot on. So let's jump in.
got off the train, 42nd Street, Times Square, and uh, worked my way east. The sun came up about 10 minutes ago, and I just got dripped on, which means that we'll probably have some pretty nice light happening in the next 15, 20 minutes. So I'm gonna try and stake out a spot and see what, uh, see what pops off. It usually takes me a few minutes to warm up when I kind of get started on the day, and especially because this was you know, pretty early in the morning. It was like, I don't know, 6.30 a.m. or 6.45 or something like that, and the sun had just come up, as I, as I said. And you know, I can see here that I'm starting to immediately, right off the bat, lean into some slower shutter work. Um, I, I made a video about that recently that I, I will link below about why I use shutter um, and slow shutter in a lot of my work recently. And it's because I really feel like it, it adds a sense of emotion and storytelling to static images. Uh, but I really feel like I, I leaned into that a lot uh, on this particular morning. So I, it took me a minute to sort of warm up and I could see, you know, here I was shooting some reflections and nothing really was working and the frame is a little bit too busy, especially in black and white. It's, it's hard to discern what's a reflection, what's in the store, and maybe that chaos is something that you like, but I didn't feel like in these particular shots anything, you know, interesting was really happening. But as I turned to my left and really looked across 42nd Street and 6th Avenue here, um, I started to see people crossing the street and I felt like there was something about the motion of the pedestrians walking through the crosswalks that felt sort of fluid. And if you've ever been here, you know that the, the way that people cross the streets here in the intersections, especially a bigger intersection like that, tends to be very sort of free flowing and fluid. And so I really brought my shutter down and was trying to just get a sense of both that fluidity and that chaos. And so I tried a couple, and this, I think, was the one that was the most effective. This guy was kind of crossing the street. He actually had this, like, crazy headset on that I uh, I sort of um, obscured in the slow shutter here. But what I like about this image is that you get just sort of, like, the the impression of this, this guy in this white shirt being there and crossing the street. Meanwhile, the sort of energy and the fluidity of the intersection is, is really carrying the frame. So I think this is actually a, pr a pretty decent image. Now, as I, as I kept walking um, east towards Grand Central from the Times Square area, there was this couple and they were, you know, sort of cute and they were holding hands and they were both wearing like white clothes. And I tried to get just their hands and try and get sort of a, a sense of that connection early in the morning against the sidewalks. I don't think this really worked, um, but I can see what I was trying to do here. And I, I definitely was still, you know, warming up. But as I got a little bit closer to Grand Central, one of the buildings was cleaning its windows, and so the sidewalks were really wet. And if you've ever heard the term a wet down, which is something that you know um, directors and uh, DPs use in cinematography on films, a lot of times the street is wet down for scenes because that reflection from the asphalt and the water creates a really sort of dramatic sense of um, you know visual interest. And so I sort of stopped and I noticed that this bit of sidewalk was um, was wet and that people were sort of just moving through it on their commute. So I, I pulled the shutter down again and I took mostly just um, images and frames of people as they walked through the frame. It wasn't the people, but more their shadows or their feet. It feels very film noir to me. I've been watching a lot of old film noir movies. You know, I shoot a lot in black and white and I feel very um, inspired by a lot of those old noir movies. And I think that there's a sense of that that is showing up in these images as well. And actually this particular image, I, I quite like. Um, I think it's about sort of one foot being more in focus than the other and that it's you know got this sense of motion, but that it also feels a little bit aimless and reckless because the, the angle isn't straight on. Um, I think there's something kind of interesting about this. Now, as I got closer to Grand Central, I actually saw this escalator. It's kind of coming up from the subway into a, a brand new building. And the shape of it, I thought was really interesting. And um, the way that it was lit, there was a really strong sense of kind of leading lines and geometry. So I just kind of like parked it for a little while and waited for subjects to come up the escalator to fill the frame in different ways. And I, I took quite a few of these with varying types of focus, them in focus, them out of focus, people sort of hitting some of these um, highlights and some people in the dark and single subjects and multiple subjects. I don't know that any of them are 
really amazing, but I think that I will probably go back to this location and try to make some uh, new pictures there in the future, especially as um, the light sort of lines up even better. Because here's the thing, it's still a little bit too early in the fall for the sun to totally line up against the grid. So I was sort of improvising because I was hoping it would be a little bit better um, and further along than it was. I'm, I'm a couple of weeks early. Now, I had a lot of fun kind of playing around inside Grand Central itself. You can see that there was sort of a, a pool of light that was, you know, pretty much in the center of the floor. And it was just early enough in the morning that there was a lot of commuting happening, but it wasn't like peak commuting hour. So there was still space between people as they were moving through Grand Central Station. Um, and so there were two things that I was really playing with. The first is that, you know, as you look at this image, what I was waiting for, and it took a minute for this to happen, is the guy on the left and the woman on the right, they almost seemed to be looking for each other. They, they weren't, but from just a visual standpoint, they both kept freezing in place while the sort of swarms and crowds of commuters moved around them. And so I, I tried a couple of times to isolate them being still as the rest of the city kind of swirled around it. And I think that this one, you know, did that. And I think that um, it's one of those images that you might miss if you look at it sort of quickly, but if you look at it a little bit longer, you start to understand that the intention of the image itself was these two people sort of standing near each other, but not quite connecting, but sort of looking in each other's general direction. It sort of has this sense of like, missed connection in a, in a busy city, almost like a sliding door situation. So um, I, I was really happy with this one. So I was on the west side of uh, Grand Central Station shooting into the station, looking east at the sort of the sunlight as it was coming in. And you can see here that there's sort of like a, a soft puddle of light that people were crossing through. And so I just kept waiting for, you know, the right subject to walk through there. And I deliberately wanted this again to be sort of that slow shutter. So I, I, I really slowed the shutter speed down here um, to make sure that as somebody were to pass through it, then it really created this sense of motion to give us an impression of like an archetype as opposed to an individual. The one that I liked the most of the handful that I made was this one where you can just barely tell that it's a man in a business suit with the white collar on the dark suit um, that I think is, you know, pretty effective. And I, I, I was quite pleased with this one as it came out. And then these are in the similar vein, but looking more at the relationships between different people as they're moving through the frame. And again, using that slow shutter to sort of give them just that sense of motion, almost like they're ghosts just being present in the frame, but not, you know, they're literally like they're just there for that second and, and then off they go. Um, so I was really happy with these. I may you know go back and keep trying to make some sort of updated versions of these and see what um, I can do to get even more creative with these. These are, um, I think, interesting, uh, but not the most creative use of that light. So I may, I may go back and, and play around with that a little bit more in the, in the coming month or two. Now, right outside of Grand Central on 42nd Street, there's like this you know, bridge um, that underneath it has a pedestrian crossway and above it is sort of the traffic that goes up and around Grand Central. And on the street across from Grand Central, there's this cafe called Pershing Square and it's got all this like cool neon lights or whatever, but there's a lot of commuting that happens back and forth, people coming and going from Grand Central. And, and so I walked back and forth across this crosswalk a couple of times, um, trying to catch people doing interesting things as they were crossing with me. Um, you know, it was a little bit of a slower shutter. I missed focus a little bit, um, but I, you know, that never like really bothers me. I don't care about crystal, crystal sharp images. I care more about the impression and the emotion and the sense of place that a picture gives me when I when I make it and then when I view it. So I think that these that I've included here are like, you know, they're they're a, a sense of what was happening in that morning. Now this one actually stands out for me as well. And I, I made a couple of this guy, I kind of saw him coming down the sidewalk and he had this hat on that was, you know, very striking, of course. I think, you know, a lot of us as street photographers, we, we like hats and like exciting sort of dramatic clothes, especially things that maybe sort of reference earlier periods. He was dressed super modern, but he had this hat on. And so he was like waiting to cross the street and I kind of like followed him across the street a little bit. And then just as he was kind of like moving to my left, I, I could feel that the sun was coming out. And so I just like, I banged like one frame out. I wasn't, you know, really sure if he was even gonna be in it because again, like 
on the 50, that, that frame is so much narrower than what I'm used to with the 28. So I was really just like hoping I got something interesting. And actually, I love the way that this came out. So the, the 50 really rendered kind of the, the soft sunlight of the early morning kind of coming into the frame and the black and white nature of it, I just think is a really, really um, you know beautiful image and really gives a strong sense of like where we were, what was happening, the time of the day, what this guy was going through. So I think this was also um, a great image that I'm, I'm really, really happy with. And so we'll end on one, one last photo. And again, this kind of goes back to um, the, the film noir one that I mentioned earlier, sort of the, the shadows and the, the, the man's kind of feet on the wet down sidewalk. This is not the same sidewalk. This is a little bit further downtown. Um, but I, I went for that same mood and I actually feel like there's something really striking about this one. And it's, it's striking in a different way than that sort of original one that I talked about because this feels maybe a little more menacing. Um, and it wasn't, it was a beautiful morning and these people were just kind of going about on their day. But that's, I think what makes street photography so exciting sometimes is it can be literal. It can be, where was I? What was happening? What were these people doing? or it can be interpretive. And I think that that's really where my head is right now, is trying to play with the light, play with the exposure, play with the uh, the shutter speed, and play with what's happening in the city, and create a mood. Uh, it feels like I'm maybe moving a little bit away from the more documentary style of street photography and a little bit more in a slightly abstract direction. And I think it's kind of fun. And I'm wondering if that's um, coming from the 50 mil or if that's just something that is happening more broadly in my work. Uh, so I think, so I think stay tuned and uh, let's, let's see how the work develops over the next, you know, month or two as I get out a lot in the early mornings. So I think that's it for me. It's been a really, um, it was a good week to get out and try something new to, you know, put a different lens on and really force myself to think more creatively and do something differently. And, uh, you know, I was excited to see um, sort of what was happening uh, with my images over the course of this week. And I'm excited to see where it goes. I, I hope that you found this video, you know, useful, entertaining, enlightening. My goal is to share not just my work, but also the thought process behind it and tell you why I do and don't connect with some of the images that I make. I think that's really valuable and, and helpful. And I love to hear other photographers talk about the why behind their images. So that's the goal with this video. That's the goal with this channel. I hope that you find that interesting and um, entertaining, of course. And uh, if you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe, uh, like the video, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.